comet Tyson's recent outburst of activity has done more than simply brighten the comet. Whatever exploded from the comet's core also created a spectacularly long tail, more than 16 million kilometers from end to end. Scroll down to see the full extent of Comet Edison as photographed on November 17 by Michael J. Dur of Abenwaldi, Austria. The tail of the comet stretches more than 70 across the sky, says J. Dur. It's almost as wide as the bowl of the Big Dipper. Physically, Edison's tail is about 12 times wider than the Sun. So, when the head of Edison plunges into the Sun's atmosphere on November 28, more than 15 million kilometers of the comet's tail will still be jutting into space behind it. Because so much gas and dust is spewing from the comet's core, it is impossible to see clearly what caused Comet Edison's outburst on November 13 to 14. One possibility is that fresh veins of ice are opening up in the comet's nucleus, vaporizing furiously as Edison approaches the Sun. Another possibility is that the nucleus has completely fragmented. If so, it will still be several days, before we know for sure, says Carl Buttons, an astronomer with NASA's Comet Edison Observing Campaign. When comet nuclei fall apart, it's not like a shrapnel-laden explosion. Instead, the chunks slowly drift apart at slightly different speeds. Given that Edison's nucleus is shrouded in such a tremendous volume of light scattering dust and gas right now, it will be almost impossible to determine this for at least a few days, and perhaps not until the comet reaches the field of view of NASA's Stereo Hiwana instrument on November 21, 2013. We will have to wait for the chunks to drift apart a sufficient distance, assuming they don't crumble first. Monitoring is encouraged. Comet Edison rises in the east just before the sun. Amateur astronomers, if you have a go-to telescope, enter these coordinates. Dates of special interest include November 17th and 18th, when the comet will pass the bright star Spica, making us an extra easy to find. Three sunspot groups are 1897, are 1899, and are 1900 have beta gamma magnetic fields that harbor energy for M-class solar flares. The three potential flare sites are circled in this November 18th image taken by NASA's Solar Dynamics Observatory. All three sunspot groups are facing Earth, more or less, so any eruptions today would likely be geoffective. NOAA forecasters estimate a 60% chance of M-class flares and a 15% chance of 10 flares on November 18th, 